surprised at my hair. You gonna play forward or guard? Freeze, let you see practice. always been like that. Have they? I know mm -hmm. it got worse in the past couple years. What They've always been like, like the presumption is that you want to just see their stupid game for free. It's crazy. It's crazy. Ridiculous, man. It's much cheaper to go see a game in Brooklyn. And they have a better, better product. product. <laughs> and the flight plan for a better game. Yeah, man. It's because you have a history. And they put in better lighting, but it's not. Kind of. Yeah. <laughs>
mention her name or yeah, something, whatever. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four.
credit to uh, Coach Ewing and his team. Uh, you know, we, we, we're coming off a game where we did a poor job rebounding the basketball and gave up a bunch of offensive rebounds and uh, came into this game knowing that this is a strength of this particular team. And it was a focus of ours to try to keep them off the glass. And, and we didn't do a good job with that. And they were aggressive. Uh, they got to the glass. As a result, they got a lot of second chance opportunities and got a lot of opportunities to go to the free throw line and shot 51 free throws, which is quite a bit. Uh, and, uh, you know, the other thing is we didn't do a great job taking care of the basketball. Th those two areas, I think, if we do a better job uh, in a really competitive game, um, it, it would have been more competitive longer and we have a better chance to win it. I, I, I'm, I'm proud of my team in one respect that, uh, you know, you go in a locker room after a game and there was a lot of emotion in there because they do play really hard and they pour their heart into it and uh, they want to win. We've had a tough schedule, um, but they're young and they don't know any better and they want to win. So uh, I'm proud of that. And we just got to get back to work and continue to get better and uh, got a ton of challenges ahead. You weren't able to play with as much pace as you did against Duke. Was that due to Georgetown's transition defense, fatigue on your part, or just go to the game? Well, I think some of it had to do with foul trouble. You know, we had some guys pick up uh, the second foul. We had t maybe three guys that had two in the first half, and then we had several guys pick up their third early in the second half. So uh, that affected us uh, to some degree. Um, we scored enough points to win a basketball game. We just gave up too many. Um, so from a pace standpoint, uh, it wasn't as much of a concern. I just think the 20 offensive rebounds is, is just too much and 18 turnovers. So that's 38 extra possessions you give your opponent in a game where you're up by, I think we're up six at the half. So uh, I think, we, you know, we can mitigate some of that uh, in those two areas. You asking me about the officials? No, I'm asking you. Uh, uh, yeah, you know we we play hard. We got to get better at playing without fouling. It's something we emphasize. We talk a lot about. Um, they were a big team, and so we were hoping that our quickness could uh, sort of neutralize some of that advantage that they had. Um, and they were aggressive. I think, you know, we wound up out of position and not rebounding the ball. And I think a lot of the fouls were uh, connected to those extra possessions and our turnovers. So, um, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. It's a, it's a veteran crew. They, do, they did a good job. In Josh's four games this year, I believe he has two double-doubles and two games where he has not made a single field goal. Do you have a sense yet of who the real Josh Linder is? Well, I think this year is a great opportunity for Josh to grow as a player, you know, and I think um, Josh is capable of doing what he's done, obviously. Um, and the Duke game was more of a byproduct of us trying to play the smaller lineup more often. I haven't played him at the five much because we felt like we really had to drive the ball in that game. So I don't think that is like Josh not showing up for the game. Uh, and uh, he was hurt and didn't play in the opener. So I think the two games where he got the double-doubles are more indicative of the approach that he's taken and the productivity he's capable of having. We're not placing that burden on him to, get to have those kind of numbers, but we're encouraged by it. Coach, this is the toughest stretch of your schedule this year. How has this prepared you going forward throughout the season? Well, it's hard for me to look that far ahead right now, you know. Uh, I'm just... Uh, uh, disappointed because I, I really thought this was a game that we could win. And, I, you know, listen, when you're a first-year coach and you're trying to instill in your team a culture and some habits and a style and you want them to buy into it and they're doing it, you want it for them to experience the success of the fact that they're buying into your deal, right? And uh, I, I really want it for them to experience that and when they do, 
it emboldens them and the culture that we're trying to create, right? It just strengthens everything you're doing. And until we have that success, you're still searching for that, right? And uh, I think if you watch us play, it didn't, didn't take up rocket science, didn't see that these guys are going to be all right. But I want them to feel that, and it's hard. I, I think people on the outside looking in have a lot of respect for our team, but our guys don't see it yet because they haven't had enough success yet to, for it to really resonate with them and for them to really internalize it, right? So uh, until we do, we're going to continue to chase that. Got time for one more. Coach, in the second half, what did you think of the impact of number 23 for them, Josh DeBlanc? Yeah, he was good. He did. He was live and and active, and uh, you know his ability to to attack and play inside out. You know, he he was a he was a really effective player. I I thought uh, Eric Seven um, really impacted the game. His size and uh, what he could do inside uh, was he was a tough matchup for us. And um, is it, they're a good they're a good team. They're deep and and they're still learning. You know about themselves as well. You can see that, but they uh, they did some good things. They they give themselves something to build on here tonight too. All right, thanks guys. Yep. Were you happy today with your transition defense, particularly in the second half? Uh, I thought in the second half, I was happy with most uh, most everything. We still made a lot of mistakes, but um, our press, uh, helped, you know, they, they pressed us and we pressed them. So both teams was going back and forth. But um, I thought that we overpowered them. Uh, with O'Meara had 11 offensive rebound. You know, he didn't... Uh, Make some of them, but he did an outstanding job of creating uh, op more opportunities for us. It's very important. Um, you know, it's funny. Ever since I've uh, I've been here, we sh in, in practice we shoot a lot of free throws, <laughs> a lot of free throws, and you know, for for occasions like this. Um, you know, we are we are a team that we have a lot of guys that can get to the can drive and, and create contact, and we have to step up and be able to make free throws if we're going to be a, a good team. Do you, to follow up, do you feel like you can get a three point presence to emerge? From the oh, definitely. You know, we need our guys to be able to to, to make shots. 
uh, especially wide open shots. James didn't uh, shoot the ball particularly well. Javon Blair, who's uh, supposed to be one of our best shooters, he hasn't been hitting the ball, hitting his, his, his three-point shots. Mack was been struggling, and he, he kind of came out of his slump today. Um, you know, Jamarco, he, he, uh, he hit some, he missed some. But we have guys on, on our team who are, who are shooters, or even Galen, Alexander. But they have to step up and make shots. Who? <laughs> well, you know, he's he's our he's our energizer bunny, um, and that's what we need out of him. We need his energy, his effort, uh, while, while as he continues to grow, uh, as his, his games continue to grow. Um, he had what? He played 21 minutes, 23 minutes. He only had four re uh, th four rebounds. That's that's not enough. They were good rebounds. Uh, they were good rebounds, but that's not enough. At 12 points, um, you know, he needs to defend, uh, block, you know, two block shots, that's not enough either. But um, he impacted the game. After Patrick Stevens with the Athletic, how, how happy have you been with the overall defense so far? I haven't been happy with it. What needs in particular needs? It's like I said uh, the other night versus Penn State, it starts with individual defense. Um, everyone has to lock in. Uh, and guard the guy in, in, that he's, guard, that he's uh, guarding. But also, then the, you know, if he gets beat, we, we have to make sure that we have our team defense is there to help. To, it's still, it's, I feel like everyone, is, everyone is on an island, and they don't, they're not doing doing all the, the team defensive things that we need to do, or the individual t uh, defensive things that we need to do. We work on it every day, but it has, it hasn't translated yet into the games. Um, yeah, obviously I had a, a, a little bit of a slump going on. Um, I don't think it was, it was the teams we were playing. I think it was just something I had to deal with personally. Uh, you know, cause I think every, every player goes through those type of slumps and I just kept my head right and I got in the gym and I'll never quit in those situations. I always continue to work and coach, coach continued to believe in me and I, um, kind of got out of it tonight. I was just trying to be aggressive and uh, make the right play. I wasn't anything particular. Coach, do you think that we even the second half kind of unlocked you guys, got you guys flowing offensively? Um, I, I, the weave? Yeah, yeah, right. I don't know. Pistol. <laughs> the pistol. Um, I, I just thought it was a little bit of everything. Uh, Omer doing a great job on the boards. Uh, those Mike, Mike had it going. James was in the, getting in into, into the lane, making some plays at times. Uh, uh, I thought that Jake and Mosley, he's been a, a rock for us, uh, especially the start of the year. Um, you know, I thought that everyone who played did something to help us uh, win. It wasn't just one uh, particular thing. Josh, obviously you came off the bench. What were you seeing out there that in the second half you were able to kind of say, okay, this is what I need to do today? Uh, I feel like when I came in the game the first half, I came out a little bit too flat. Uh, and me being my role as an energizer, I feel like I just had to pick up the energy. Patrick, you kind of shortened your bench in the second half. Um, is that something you might see based on the way the game is going? And can you talk about a little bit about you went with a smaller lineup towards the end, no Amir or Wahab? Um, yeah, it all depends on how the game is going. Yeah, well, I've been playing 11 guys, and... It all depends on how the flow of the game is going. And yeah, I went I went small because Omer was doing a great job. He had he picked up his fourth or fifth foul, so I had to take him out. And those guys, Josh was doing an, ex, uh, an outstanding job of not only guarding their bigs but also uh, getting rebounds and uh, energizing the team. Last question. Oh, it definitely feels good. Um, you know, it, we would hate to be going back, going there, you know, with with two losses. Um, so hopefully it'll help pick us up, not you know, individually and, and collectively, and get ready for Texas. Thank you. Hey, let me brush my